Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with day three of our Half the Battle, Healing Your Hidden Hurts, devotional the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And I just got to say, if you missed the previous two days, you need to go back and listen mm-hmm. to them. Honestly, they were probably two of my favorites of the year. That could be just because we're feeling super on fire. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So if you miss those, definitely go check them back, but um, go check them back out. There go we are. Go listen. Go listen. <laughs> Speaking of listening, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to read the <laughs> devotional. Let's do it. Okay. The scripture is Genesis chapter 45, verse five, and it says this, but don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. The devotional is titled Dealing With Your Pain. It says this, we all have hurts. Some are small wounds of rejection that happen on a daily basis. Others are catalytic events that shape us in ways we haven't even realized. Many times we've carried our pain so long that we've forgotten it's even there. The first step to healing is acknowledging your pain. Be brutally honest with yourself. Who or what has hurt you? It doesn't matter if the situation was small or huge. A piece of it remains in you. Take your pain out of your subconscious and bring it into the light. Next, decide what you are going to do with your pain. One option is to hide it away. It feels too heavy and difficult to deal with, so you bury it in a dark corner of your heart and keep it hidden. The problem with this method is that pain doesn't decrease in darkness. Instead, it becomes bigger and bigger until it begins to impact your thought life, your relationships, and your habits. The second option is to pass the pain off to those around you. It's your friend's fault that you're an addict. It's your family's fault that you lose your temper. However, this strategy still doesn't lessen the pain. Think of someone who has the flu. Spreading it to someone else doesn't lessen the effects of the virus on the original sick person. They are still sick, and now so is the newly infected person. The same is true for trying to pass off your pain. You still carry it with you, and now so do the people you love. There is a third option, carrying your pain along. You tell yourself, this is my problem. I will just carry it and handle it myself. That may work for a while, but then you'll start to feel the weight of the pain. You can try repositioning it, telling yourself you just need a little more money, a little more attention, etc. But the pain will eventually wear you down because it's just too heavy. If hiding, passing, and carrying your pain aren't healthy options, what can you do? You can lay it at the feet of Jesus. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus can take the broken pieces of your life and build something beautiful for his glory and for your good. You can trust him with your pain. The question at the end says this, what pain do you need to acknowledge and bring to Jesus? Wow, that one that one really hit me. Um, I don't know how you all feel, but there's those three ways of like dealing with pain in an unhealthy way. There's hiding it, which is like pretending that it's not there. There's passing it, which is basically projecting it onto other people or other situations around you, or there's carrying your pain. And I definitely do the third. I'm the one who would just kind of like white knuckle it and just be like, okay, I'll just push through this. Mm -hmm. But then you get to a point where just like what the author said is you become over encumbered. You feel like you're carrying this massive weight this massive burden. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know how you all feel. It'd be really interesting to hear if you all are someone who just kind of hides it and pretends it's not there. You pass it along to people, or if you're someone who just deals with it, but this really spoke to me. And it's funny how Jesus will meet us in any of the ways that we deal with pain. For example, that the first option, which is to hide it and pretend it's not there. I remember during Tori's labor and delivery, I had a lot of like hidden hurt where I was really mad at Jesus. And we shared about that and the the birth story. Mm-hmm. But I remember whenever I did take that hidden hurt and I put it on his feet, 
oh my gosh, the healing that I received. The whole story is on YouTube. Like it's yeah. crazy the way God spoke to me during that time. And he showed me where he was when I thought he was absent. Yeah. But in the, at the same time, like the third option, which is carrying your, which is carrying your pain along with you. There's been times in my life where I just like, I fall at his feet cause I can't carry it anymore. And then he says, give me your burdens, take upon yeah. my yoke. And I'm just remember that, oh, wow, like I don't have to carry this. Right. And so it's just so fun to see that no matter where we are and how we handle pain, he has a way of helping us. Yeah, that's so good. And kind of what I was thinking about, because I'm definitely the, the kind of person who will just like hide it. Like I'm like, oh, let's just pretend like that never happened. It yeah. doesn't exist. Right. Let's like keep it in that dark little corner of my heart. And what God has reminded me so often in my life when I do that is anything that remains in darkness is in the enemy's territory because the enemy is he's the darkness, right? Like he resides in the dark places. But as we bring even the hardest things into the light where Jesus exists, there is healing that exists. There is hope that exists in the light. Like it is, by definition, right? Like if it's in the presence of the father cannot stay dark anymore. Like he will redeem and restore. That's who he is. And so we have to remember that if we're hiding things, if it's Mm -hmm. secret sin, if it's this hurt that we have just like held on to for way too long, it's our choice to keep it in the enemy's territory. And it's also our choice if we want to reach our hand down, grab it, and bring it to the feet of Jesus. And just remember that as we do that, it might not be the easiest process in the moment, but it is so beyond worth it because the joy that we'll experience, the peace we'll experience, the lightness that we will experience so supersedes us just like carrying it around or pretending it never happened or projecting it onto other people. Like none of those ways bear any spiritual fruit. And so just as we were talking about yesterday, it's like if we want to bear spiritual fruit, we have to remain in him. We have to bring these things to the light. We have to go through the process. Yeah. And to do so in a healthy way, I think I just want to say this with sensitivity. Tori and I have an ongoing partnership with BetterHelp Mm -hmm. where you can get access to like a licensed Christian therapist. And I know that I feel comfortable unpacking some of the things that I've been hurt by just because I actually studied some of that stuff in school. Um, But if you're someone who looks like maybe you think you maybe need a sounding board, Mm -hmm. uh, whether you go to a pastor um, a mentor, uh, just honestly, someone who's uh, in a healthy place just to bounce ideas off of, or yeah. you want to access like a licensed therapist, we, we'll put a link in the description, but just make sure that whoever you talk to, or even if you're talking to yourself, it's going to lead to healing mm-hmm. rather than leading to just putting all the baggage or open wounds on the mm-hmm. table and yeah. not knowing how to close them back up. So I think right. that's my my one thing I'll be careful with is that yeah. whenever we go deep, into those places of like saying, oh, like I want to bring this pain to Jesus. We have to make sure that this is like something that's going to be healing Mm -hmm. versus if we get overwhelmed by the stuff that maybe, because I know a lot of you have experienced pretty hard things. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to be overwhelmed where you fall into a deeper place. So I guess just do that with sensitivity. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Just want to mention that. With help. For sure. Yes. With help. Want to pray something out? I do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you are the great physician, Father, the great healer, the ultimate comforter, our Prince of Peace, Father. We know that you don't want us walking around with hidden hurt. We know that you don't want us keeping things in the darkness when they can be restored in your light, Father. So I pray that you would help us, that you would open our eyes to even see the things that we have been hiding deep down. And give us the courage to bring them into the light today. And Lord, I just pray for those people who feel like they don't have anyone to process this with. Father, I pray that you would bring them a mentor, a spiritual uh, counselor, Father. And if not, I just pray that they find so much comfort alone in your presence. That you would help them sift through the feelings, sift through the hurt, and experience your healing power, Father. Because... Nothing compares to your presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When now it's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we're talking to you tomorrow. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.